In this video, I'm going to be playing Goal Chosen. Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. So, just a quick introduction today, I'm going to be playing Goal Chosen. i show you the mechanics of the game and show a full playthrough of how to play. If you're new here and this is your first time watching, thanks very much. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to click the little notification bell to make sure that you don't miss an upload. So here we are then, the first game of Goal Chosen. So what I'll do is, this is going to be really kind of showing you how to play, uh, and I'll just work through all of the mechanics, try and see if we can get a full game in. So I'll discuss most of it as we go, but just to show you, um, this is basically the, the arena that, that the uh, the fighters fight in. Along the edge here, the, where it's gold, you have uh, walls with spikes on, so basically you can push them against the walls and uh, do damage that way. And here on the, the red outlined hexagons, these are pits, you can basically, basically push them. Um, the other player down. Uh, this is what's called the Wrath Tracker. So we start on this orange line in the middle at three, and basically your, your wrath goes up or down, and this number along the left-hand side corresponds to how many of these initiative cards go into the deck at the start of a turn. So each player is dealt five action cards at the start of the turn, and these are the player cards. So down the right-hand side here is how we, we measure their health. Uh, the health uh, is quite a, an interesting mechanic, so we'll come out of that in a bit. Uh, here we've got, um, basically we cover up the wounded marker. At some points in the game, when you turn over certain critical injury cards, it will ask you to move one of these across. So as you can see here, um, on the dark blue squares, he hits on a 4+, plus and does 4 wounds. And then as, we, as he's damaged, he now hits on a 4+, plus, but he only does 3 wounds on that first one. So that's how that works, but we'll come on to that again when it's relevant. Here is the kill zone, so if the white hexagon is where they're standing, the lighter blue ones relate to the lighter blue hit and wound, and the darker blue to the darker blue one there. And that's basically where you are in relation to the character you're fighting against. Each character has a unique action that you can choose to do at um, some point in the game. You have to discard two action cards for this, and there is also uh, basically kind of like a, a little boost so for instance on this one if it's roll a dice after an attack has been resolved against you from inside your kill zone and on a result of a five or six the attacker suffers d3 wounds so we'll have to remember these kind of things because this guy has higher sort of um to hit so fours and fives as opposed to the other guy who's threes and fours but he has the option to be uh, has the chance show it sorry to be able to do a bit of damage uh, sort of as sort of a bit of a backhanded swing at them so we set them up what you do is um, you basically put one initiative card each into a pile, shuffle them up and d turn over the first one and that player can set up first. This game does support up to four players, but we're just going to play with two here just to kind of show you the rules. So in this instance, we've got um, Red Arg Bloodfane here has set up first. The second player then sets up and he can set up anywhere on the board, not on top of uh, one of these pits uh, and has to be a um, uh, a minimum of two hexagons away so as you can see here the board is marked into hexagons and there's two between them so what we do now is we look on the wrath tracker uh, the wrath is at three at the start of the game so each player takes three of their initiative cards and we basically shuffle them to see uh, the initiative turn so I'll shuffle these up and I'll be right back okay so we've got the initiative cards here so what we do is we turn over the first initiative card and this symbol basically relates to the same symbol on the wrath tracker and for for that particular player so you can see here on there so this player gets to go first and that's red Arc blood fan so he then has to check his action cards so let's spread these out and uh, i'll show you how they work so this is this player's uh, five action cards you can see they're split into three sections so the first section is always about movement the second section is always an attack and the third section it tends to be a defensive or a kind of a, a bit of a, like a, a tricky maneuver if you like. What this means here is that the player can move four hexagons in any direction and then change their facing uh, at the end of that move. However, it does cost you two wrath points. So what would happen here is your wrath would then drop by two points and if it stayed there at the end of the turn, you'd only get two initiative cards into the pool for next turn. You then have things like stride here, which means you can move one hexagon in a straightforward movement and you have to um, face directly away from the hexagon that you left. And there's also some that can move back, but uh, we, don't, haven't dull, um, we haven't 
chose any of those here. The attacks, so a strong attack, you roll three dice, and depending upon where they are in your arc, depends upon uh, which one you use. Uh, however, again, this one makes you reduce your, your wrath by one. We've got things like a wild swing, uh, and there's little bonuses there. So on this one, you can re-roll any failed hits if your target's directly in front of you. There's kind of just a desperate swing, so one dice, bit of a wild throw, but it does move your wrath back up. So in this case, it would move up. And really what you'd like to do is you'd be up in the four, so you get more initiative cards, which is more turns. Then from defensive ones, we've got things like dodge. So after you've um, had an attack made against you, you play that card, roll a dice, and on a five or six, you suffer no wounds. And block is very similar. Uh, basically, you roll a dice for each hit that was scored against you. And on a five or a six, you avoid those. So that's basically how those cards work. So in this instance, we, we need to get into combat, really. As you can see, his uh, kill zone is very close to him. It's only the first... Uh, the immediate three hexagons in front so he's not going to be doing a lot of damage when he's two hexagons away so we really want to be moving towards the other player now what we've got here we've got charge which allows us to move three squares uh, sorry three hexagons directly forward and after resolving that we can make another attack so what we'll do is we'll put that on a discard pile you can move up to that number so he will move one two and now we're going to make an attack. So I think what we'll do is we want to get some uh, some attacks in early. I think we'll go with the strong attack. So again, we have to move the wrath down by one. So he comes down to two. And then we have to roll three dice. And those three dice, because he's in that directly, as you can see, this is his front facing. He's in uh, the hexagon directly in front. It's a dark blue one. So he hits on a four plus and each hit does four wounds so it's three dice and we want four pluses and we've got two so that would be eight wounds to to this guy however we'll have a look through his cards and we'll see uh, if he's got anything that can defend against it so this is his five cards uh, he's got duck under so pick the jason fighter and swap places with them and both fighters keep their face in that's not a defense though against this and um, we've got parry so after an attack is made roll a dice each hit that is scored less than the number you roll is discarded and causes no wounds so in that case i would remove the two because that was a failed attack i'd have to score uh, a five and a six to to block those two out so we'll see if there's anything else it doesn't really seem to be much so i think what we'll do is because that card we'll uh, we'll try that one so we roll two dice we're trying to beat those two scores there, the four and the five. So we roll two dice and we've got a two and a six. So the six beats both the five and the four. So it negates one of those two. So we only take one uh, of the hits this time. So one hit is four wounds. So the way we track this down is your health meter basically moves down by one, two, three, four. And I'll show you what happens when it gets to the bottom because that isn't uh, that doesn't mean the player's dead. So that is his turn. We then go back to the initiative card. We turn over the next one and player moves to the other player now. So unfortunately for Red uh, Red Og, he's now in the front arc of Heldrax as well, and he hits on a three plus and does three wounds. So we choose a card to play here. I think what we want to do is we want to try and do as much damage as possible. So we'll do the mighty strike. So we need to reduce the wrath by two. So one, two, and we then roll four dice. And as we mentioned before, he hit on a three plus. So that's a little bit better. So he's done four hits there. Let's just move them to the side. So let's see if he has anything that can do any um, defense here. So he has a couple of block cards there. So play this card after an attack is made against you. Roll a dice for each hit that was scored. Uh, it's discarded on a five or a six. So what we need to do is we need to roll four dice um, to try and beat those. So we'll roll two first. So we've got, oh, we've got a six and a four. So that's six. Basically gets rid of one of the hits. And we roll two more dice. 
and they got another six which will get rid of another hit so we're down to two we're taking two hits and his wounds do three points of damage so that is six points of damage to red Og, which is one two three four five six now remember uh, roll a dice after attack has been resolved against you from inside your kill zone on a five or six the attacker suffers d3 wounds so we roll one dice for that we're looking for a five or a six and it's a four so nothing happens back to the initiative cards and this is where we get interesting so much like sort of bolt action where you have that dice pool and you're just drawing out for random uh, turns the same thing has happened here and now uh, Heldrax gets to go again so what we'll do is we'll uh, just get rid of that card that we've already played i think what we'll do here is we'll go for mighty strike again so we're already uh, lost two you can't lose more than the bottom so we lose another one there and we'll do the four dice so again we're looking for threes to hit and uh, we've achieved two do we have anything to defend with? We've got block. No, I think what we'll do is we'll try and block it. So play this card after an attack. Roll a dice for each hit that was scored. Discard it on a five or a six. So fives or sixes. We've got a five, so we only take one of the hits. So it was three wounds. This is where the wounds come into force. So we take three wounds, so that's one. We've now lost one of our points of health. And we take a critical injury card. So we'll come out of that in a second. Two, three. So as you can see, every time you come off the end of the chart, you get a critical injury card, and there's one less wound um, that's available to you. So every time you take a wound, you get a critical injury card. So this one says stunned. You'll move your wrath token up one space. So wrath token goes back up to three. And then discard a random card from your hand. So, um, we use this block card so that's already gone so just a random card we'll just pick that one normally of course they'd be turned over and your opponent wouldn't see them and they'd probably just pick a random card so that is the end of that turn again red Og has had attack against them on a five or a six he's the other player suffers d3 wounds and it's a four so nothing happens again now the problem we've got now is we know we've got three cards left in the initiative deck but we've only got one action card to play so that's going to be interesting now so initiative card turns and oh dear heldrax gets to go a third time in a row um so heldrax is going to obviously he can't reduce his wrath any further he's going to go for a critical strike so if your opponent takes any critical injuries from this attack they must draw one more critical injury card than they would so in order for that to happen we have to do one two three four five six points of damage uh, so we'll see what happens so a critical strike is two dice again we're looking for threes oops um, and we got one damage uh, we're not going to try and use that one card to parry it because we need that for one of our actions so three points of damage one two three and obviously there was no critical strike yeah so we have to again roll for the five or six no nope, four again he's not getting much luck with this uh, hitting them back is he so it is now his turn however he's only got one card he can use the best thing he can probably do is just get out of there so he can move four hexagons and he can't move into a hexagon that is adjacent to the fighter so the best thing we can do really is just try and sort of move around the back here i think so we're going to go one two three four and we'll turn to face and um, because remember this symbol means we can change our face at the end of a turn wrath goes down by two so it means next turn both players are only having two cards in the initiative deck uh last initiative card is obviously uh is red red Og, but we have no cards left so there's nothing we can do so at the end of that turn we now go back to the initiative deck and we put in how many cards each player has in wrath so it's two each so we end up with two each i'll shuffle these in you then discard as well um, any action cards 
put them back into the pile, shuffle them again, deal each player five. So I'll do all of that and we'll get back to the game. Okay, so we're on to turn two now. Um, we start with the initiative card. And it is Heldrax to go first. So he's facing the opposite direction. He needs to basically turn around and get into combat here. So we'll see what cards we've got that we can do with that. So this one, this one, and this one all just make him move away. Now he could do that, we'll just make him sort of defensively a little bit further away. He can flee, which makes him use three hexagons, but he need to be two hexagons away. Or he can use his dash, which basically means he can turn around and uh, get in here. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to use dash. Uh, and what that means is he will move one two and he will turn to face so he here um heldrax is in red orgs sort of light blue squares however um red red Arg here is in heldrax's front arc <laughs> those names are a nightmare aren't they? <laughs> maybe it should just be called bob and jim so it means that he can deal maximum damage to him, but currently he can only deal the minor damage to him. So that is the first uh, turn gone. We turn the initiative card over, and the next initiative card is Red Og, or Bob, as he's now going to be called. So these are the cards that he has. He can, he can attack using the sort of less damage, but what you tend to find is that he is far better in combat if he is uh, using his maximum output. Otherwise, he's hitting on a five, and that makes it quite difficult. So I think what we're going to use is we're going to use the dash card to move two hexagons and change our facing. And what we'll do is we'll go one, two, and we'll face into his rear arc. Now, that gives us some benefits as well because basically he can't attack us, but we can attack him. And remember, if you attack into the wall as well, it does give extra damage. So next initiative card, he gets to go again. Perfect, just what we needed. So what we will do is we can shove, um, and that will cause D3 wounds, or we could do a mighty strike and try and get some real damage in there. So I think we'll do that. Um, we're not going to really want to, to back up, I think, this turn. So we'll use the mighty strike there. So four damage. We um, Remember, we have to lose the two wrath as well. We've only got one left we can use. So four dice. And if you remember, he is hitting on four pluses. So we need fours, right? So we've got three hits uh, with two sixes there. So let's just move them onto the side here. Now each of his wounds, uh, each of his attacks rather do four wounds when you're in that front arc. So that would be 12 points of damage. So I'm sure that Jim here will want to try and um, defend against it. So we got block. Um, we'll discard that card. So on a five or a six, he successfully defends one of those. So, oh, three sixes could not be better. So he defends all of those. Yes, Jim did particularly well there against Bob. Um... Okay, so next initiative card, Heldrax. Now he's in the rear arc here, so he really does need to do something. Now the problem he's got is all three of his movement cards only make him go one direction straight forward. So we're going to have to use the flea card. We can't reduce the uh, wrath any further. So we have to use this and move three hexes, but we can't be within two hexes of another fighter. So we basically have to move to one, two, three, 
and we will turn to face this way so he's facing into this hex here okay end of that turn two uh, initiative the next time so we'll shuffle these four cards back together i'll clear these away shuffle everything back in and come back to you for turn three okay so we'll turn three we turn over the first initiative card if i can get my hand on it and it is jim so he's moved away he needs to get back to attack so if he moves into this square facing that way he can hit this guy but he can't hit back because he's uh this is his arc here and as you can see here he has a slightly uh, longer kill zone so ideally we want to move one square and change our facing so i think we'll use the dash card that allows us to do that next card okay bob's on the warpath now so he is going to again i think he'll use the the dash to get in so he's going to use the dash to get inside and he will move one two to here next initiative card it's jimmy boy so right he is now in the light blue arc here because this is his front arc so he's in the light blue one at the side now however we don't really want to keep moving we want to start doing some damage so let's have a look at critical strike again so we can't reduce wrath any further critical strike two dice hitting on fours and we get one hit now this one because it's his weaker uh, site only does two wounds i think we'll let that one go through we won't bother blocking it uh, actually no there's only one initiative card left so we might as well try so we're going to block it five or six we ignore it the wrath should uh yeah five or six we ignore it and it doesn't ignore it that card is used now and it was two points of damage so one two and it's not until it wraps around that we get it so the critical strike also doesn't come into account where we needed to do an extra critical injury card and the last initiative card of that round is bob there so he's in the front arc now we're going to use crippling blow if you roll any six cents your opponent must draw a critical injury card and resolve it before you can get a chance to dodge it so this is we really want some sixes here for him so yeah we've got one six there so remember he hits on a four plus in the dark blue there so we've got two hits one of them being a six so because so to resolve that first we've got the critical injury here so move your wrath token up one space so that comes back then slide one of your damage markers on your fighter reference card so it covers the healthy box uh okay so i think what we'll do is we'll move this one over so we'll keep the same kill zone but now we need to roll three sixes for this to come off so two attacks against him before we decide how much damage is there anything that we want to dodge or block it we'll try and dodge it so roll a dice a five or six you suffer no wounds no so two wounds with uh, sorry two hits gives me eight wounds so that is one two three plus an injury card four five six seven eight and the critical injury card this time says dazed move your wrath token up one space put this card in front of you next time your initiative card is drawn discard the card you cannot make any attack actions in that turn okay so we need to keep a hold of this one i'll pop it there and that's the end of that turn uh, again both got two initiative cards back in shuffle them up and i'll come back so we're on to turn four now if uh, memory serves right so we start with the initiative card and we've got uh, jimmy heldrax there who's going to activate first so you remember right we had this uh, critical injury card which means i can't do any attacks uh, that doesn't matter too much because I'm, I'm out of range anyway so i think what we'll do is look at his cards i think what we'll do is we'll do i think we'll do a dash so 
So one and two, and then we discard that critical injury card. Next activation. Okay, now we got uh, Bob there, Bob Bloodfan, uh, Bob Bloodfan. So, right, he is now, um, he still, he still has him in his, uh, in his front arc, so he could still attack. It's just on less dice, that's all. So, I think what we'll do is we'll go with the Mighty Strike, because there's four options. Uh, Wrath comes down by two, but we're already at the bottom anyway. So four dice, and he is hitting on fives. So fives and sixes, please. Uh, we get one success. And that should do three points of damage, unless he wants to defend any of this. Um... I think the problem we've got is so the parry basically says after an attack is made roll a dice hit that scored less than a number of rolls discarded now i can't score any more than six so that seems like a waste i think what we'll do is we will just accept that we're going to take those those damage so three wounds from that that brings him down to one two three and a critical injury card. Um, what we have here is discard this card, then shuffle all of the discarded critical injury cards back into the deck and finally draw another critical injury card. Okay, so I'll do that and we'll come back. Okay, so they've all been shuffled back in now. We draw a new one. And enraged. Move your wrath token up two spaces. So this is quite useful for him. Okay. Now, initiative. Oh, and he gets to go again. So I think what we'll do is we'll... Hmm. Okay, so he can't do backstab because he's not in the rear arc. He's not directly in front, so that feels like a waste. I think because we know he's going to attack next, we're probably better off just moving out of the way. So what we'll do is we'll use run. And he will go one, two, three. Okay, and then we know the last initiative card must be Jimmy here. And I think what we'll have to do. Okay, so I, we could use circle, which means I can't move any hexes that are directly adjacent, but it could get me close. However, we've got the two uh, wrath reduced. And actually, because I'm a three there and a two of the other one, I think we're probably better off to do that. So what we'll do is we'll use Swift Step, which gets in one movement and any direction, and we will use it to come up behind him there. So that is the end of turn four. Shuffle on back round, deal the cards, and we'll come back for turn five. Okay, so we've got turn five now. We'll draw the initiative card and Jimmy gets to go first. So I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll use 
this charge action. So after moving, you can reveal another card and resolve its attack. So he's going to charge. He's only going to move forward one, but it puts him into the rear arc. And he's then going to... I think he's going to go for the mighty strike so four dice reduce the wrath by two one two and four dice hitting on threes so we've got three attacks go through there um, that would obviously do nine points of damage so we obviously want to try and block that um, so what we'll, we'll, we'll think we'll do with a block here. Um, yeah, we'll do this block. So we want fives and sixes for each one that's been scored. So we'll move them to the side. Fives and sixes. We got one five. So two go through at six points of damage. So that is one. Room water goes in. And a critical injury card. Two, three, four, five, six. Critical injury card says staggered. So move the raft to open up one space. So he comes off the bottom. Then the player to your left can move you one hex in any direction and choose your facing. They can't move you into a pit. So we will then move him. Uh, we can't move him into a pit, but we can move him beside a pit. So let's put him there between them two. Uh, we discard that card. Of course, he gets to, to uh, make his roll and see if he gets five or a six. Misses it again. I don't think that's gone off yet, has it? So, next initiative card. Double turn. So what we'll do is... I think we'll use swift step to move up behind him and that'll move him into there okay next initiative card oh third turn so Unfortunately, I don't have anything that can push him at the minute. Um, and the only two actions I've really got are those. The unique action doesn't really help me at this point in time. So the unique action would be to discard two cards. Um, and then basically we're, we're going to suffer points by a difference in dice rolls plus wrath. Wrath's not particularly high at the minute. So I think we just got to have a, a desperate swing, really. So let's uh, let's do a desperate swing. One dice, and Wrath goes up by one, rather than down. And we're hitting on a three, so that succeeds. And I think he's going to want to try and block this one because there's definitely a critical injury card coming because he's on the bottom there. So we want to block it. So five or a six, and he's okay. Four. No, so he takes three points of damage. So that is one, two, three, plus the critical injury card, and this one. So move your raft token up by one. Comes up to two. If you suffered this injury as a result of an attack action, which he did, the fighter that made it moves their raft token up one space. So that pushes him back up to three again. So let's discard that card. Okay, so this is where he gets to make all of his attacks now because we know that's only his left. So he's facing the wrong way at the moment. We need to do something about that. Only one he's got that can, he can either move away or he can circle. Uh, that means that he can't be adjacent to another fighter. So we have to move that down by two. And he can move four squares, or four hexagons rather. So one, two three four because he can't be adjacent and he's facing into this square here 
and obviously last initiative card is him again he can either charge he can back up there's not much he can do really here can't push him he can charge um, and then he can do a mighty strike as well so charge he can I can only go straight ahead so it means he can only go to there should have thought about that really if I'd, if I'd had him facing that way he could have moved in that wouldn't have made any difference so put him there he's then going to use his mighty strike wrath's already at the bottom so four dice uh hitting on fives so only one goes through don't have anything to block it with so that does three points of damage that's one two three Again, yeah, so turn seven, shuffle the cards up and we'll come back. Okay, back for turn seven. First initiative card is Jimmy. So, I think what we'll use is, I'm gonna use Swift Step, which gives me one action, but all I'm gonna do actually is I am going to taking a big risk here but he's just going to turn to face him hopefully he gets next turn and he can try and push him into here uh, although he doesn't have ah he doesn't have that so what he'll do is he'll just come round to here okay because he doesn't have any push actions or shoves um so that he can't push him into the pit okay next action ah it's bob this time so he's obviously facing the wrong direction he needs to get back around unfortunately he's only got a, a backup maneuver or everything else makes him go forward so he's going to back up so that means he can back up into into that hex discard that next initiative card okay so back across now he is still in his front front three arc so he could do a strike here however you get more much more damage by being in the front however what i've got is this one moves me away this one moves me away this one's just a normal move and i think what we should do is let's just go for let's just go for a strike so two dice hitting on fours nothing okay next initiative card is him again now i know he has no cards left in the pile now so we will use the dash card to move to and we'll put them around here to hopefully get ready for a push next turn and of course the last card is this guy and he's facing the wrong way he can't change his direction with any of those all he can do is run away really so i think we'll just do that one we'll do run three squares one We'll, we'll put him somewhere safe there. I think he needs to go all the way up to the other pit. So, next turn, shuffle the cards, come back.
Okay, we're back for the next turn. Okay, so. Bob's miles away now, isn't he? He needs to get back into the action. So we need something that will get him moving and change his facing. All we've really got is a swift step. So we have to use that one. And that will get him. He was here, so we'll get him here facing this square. Okay, next initiative card. Okay, Jimmy. He has got, he can dash two, he can swift step one, or he can charge with three, but charging gets him away into the pit there. So let's do his swift step. So movement of one, and he can change his facing. That puts him into that square there. Next initiative card. Okay, so the face to face now, this is where I could get some damage going. So we'll go with a strong attack. We're already at the bottom here, so we don't move it down. Three dice, and we're hitting on fours. Oh, all missed. So, next initiative card. Oh, this is where I might get a bit nasty now. So, he's going to try a mighty strike, which moves him down. Actually, you know what? I know he's got one more card left. What we're going to do is we're going to do the dash, and I'll show you why. That will get me two squares movement. I'm going to move to here. And then on the last card, which I know is his card, we're going to do a shove. So push a fighter in your front arc. You can move into their hex if they leave it. If you do, turn to face them. So we're going to have a push here. Now how pushing fighters works basically is, he's pushed into a pit, he follows up because he can, and then basically this guy has to roll a dice. So on a one to a three, he falls down the pit, on a four, five, six, he's fine. So you would normally want to fall down the pit, but what you can do is you can discard cards up to that amount, so that uh, it'll save him. So he discards two cards, that would be, um, Two, three, four. So he's safe. In an ordinary, you have no more cards to use. However, because it's the last turn, it didn't actually um, pan out that way. So we're going to the next turn. Okay, so we're back for the next turn. And I've just rechecked the rule for pushing. And basically, if he survives that, he basically doesn't get pushed into the pit. So he, uh, he would have just stayed there. So we'll go back to where we were there. Uh, okay, so initiative turn. Okay, this guy gets to go again. Now this is a good time to uh, to try and push because what it does is it gets rid of a lot of those cards if he has to use those to defend himself. So we're going to try. Actually, you know what? I think we need to, we need to do some more damage. Otherwise, this could take quite a while because I think he's got a lot of cards. He's got five cards he could discard. Even on a, on a one, he's going to be fine. So what we'll do is we'll try a crippling blow. Move that down by one. He's hitting on his front arc, so he's hitting on threes. And we're looking out for sixes as well. So we've got one six, so two hits went through. We got a six, so he needs to draw a critical injury before he does any defending. So damaging hit, move your wrath token up one. And then slide a damage marker over. So we'll move that across. Uh, that's that basically so does he want to try and save it because he's going to take um, six wounds he's got a block or a parry yes yeah, so we're going to try and block it so fives or sixes is what we need okay so we've got one six so he takes one point of damage that's uh, why he takes one hit which is one two three we we'll mark that with another wound marker. Of course, he gets to do his um, his skull gouger, which is after an attack's been resolved. On a five or six, it only suffers a wound now. He's not done it so far. Oh, he manages it now. So, one wound to this guy as he hits him back. Okay, next card. All right, this is now Bob's turn. So, he's, he is in the front arc. Could do with turning to face him, really. But he could also do with getting out of that pit. Or, 
can he can he push as well i think cautious attack might not be a bad shout but we also need to try and get some wounds off him yeah let's just try a swift step because we could do with getting him into our front arc and getting out of that pit as well so swift step what's that next initiative card oh good to be moved eh so still in his front arc but however it's in the lower amounts let's try i think we'll try a crippling blow again so moves down by one uh, three dice looking for sixes hitting on a four this time so two go through no sixes and does he want to try and parry it i think yeah, I think that's probably his best. After an attack made against you, roll a dice. Each hit had scored less. Okay, so he needs to roll two dice, and he needs to get really a six and a five. He's got a five, so that cancels off the four. Uh, so one hit goes through, and it is two wounds. So one, two. He gets to roll his dice. Looking for a five or a six. Not missed again. Okay. So, next one, right, so, he's got another attack. Let's go for debilitating strike. So if you score any hits, uh, your opponent must discard a card from their hand at random. Um, so two dice, again, hitting on fours. Okay, so two go through. He now has parry. So after an attack is made against you, roll a dice. Each hit that scored less than number of wounds. So basically we need to roll two sixes to save. Or we need to roll at least a six to try and save this particular one. So, no, don't get them. So two go through. Uh, that is four points of damage. So we go one, two, three, four. We get a critical injury card. Move your wrath token up one space. And then discard a one at random from your hand. Now remember we also um, discard one from your hand at random as well from the debility and strike. So he loses two cards. Let's just take the first two here. And that leaves him with one card. And we know it's his initiative now. So all he can do really is circle, strike or parry. Now it is in his front arc. So I think we'll do that strike. So he's hitting on fours but it does quite a bit of damage if he does. So fours we've got three hits there um all we've really got to do is we can do a dodge so play this card after an attack is made on a result of five or six you suffer no wounds so hopefully a five or a six six no wounds everything's fine so back to two each next turn okay so next turn initiative okay so red arc to go first again he's in the front arc there so we've got to make the most of his power so do we have a let's try a berserk attack here because that means if we inflict any wounds you move your wrath token up two spaces so we drop it down one two attacks hitting on fours that's two go through um and they do four damage each so that will be eight damage unless we can block it here so we're looking for five or sixes. Okay, so we've dropped, defended one. So he takes four points of damage. That is one, two, three, four. He gets another injury token. He gets a critical injury card. This one says, move your wrath token up one space. So he goes back up to there. Then the opponent who inflicted this injury rolls a dice for each injury marker your fighter reference card. So we've got three on there at the moment. So we roll three dice for that. If they score any sixes, you are gruesomely decapitated and slain instantly. Any sixes and he's dead. Oh, <laughs> absolutely sliced the bits. So <laughs> he gets absolutely annihilated, smashed to bits. And that is the end of the game. Well done, Bob.
So how about that, Lenny? Three sixes just when I needed one for that decapitation. Couldn't have ended on a better note. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.